you, Jen. Thank you very much for the organizer to give the opportunity to present some presents. So uh, what I will present today is a collaborative uh, work we have done uh, between IRD, the African RISE, also the University of Abomey and Benin, uh, IRI and the Colorado State University. So I would like just to say a little bit about RISE in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, uh, RISE is eaten in a lot of these countries and you can see here on the map uh, each dot, the red dot, maybe you can see, yeah, uh, is representing uh, 2,500 hectares, uh, so a lot of rice in uh, West Africa. Um, there is a big gap between the demand and the supply in Africa, and most of the rice is important, and especially from Thailand. Um, and the cost for this importation is really high. Uh, and. Uh, a lot of millions of tons of uh, rice are needed in the next 25 years. Um, you can see now how the diet has changed in Africa. And a lot of uh, rice have replaced uh, um, traditional food like uh, cassava or uh, millet or maize. So this is an example of the rice production in Mali, in uh, West Africa. Uh, you can see from 1998 to 2009 uh, the, the, how the production has increased and especially in two years they doubled their production and um, there is of course a, a big extension and intensification of the rice culture in Africa, especially in West Africa and this has some consequences and the first one is that because a lot of rice are imported, uh, rice seeds are imported without any phytosanitary controls we are uh, now facing the problem of emergence of virulent strains of pathogens and the introduction of new pathogens. Among them, there is two main uh, pathogens. Uh, first of all, the Xanthomonas oryzae, uh, which cause two important diseases of rice, the Xanthomonas oryzae oryzicola, which cause the bacterial leaf streak of rice. Uh, these uh, pathogens invade uh, the rice through the wounds and stomachs. Uh, it's an intercellular uh, bacteria, so this bacteria moves and lies in between the mesophyll parenchyma. And so you can see here the symptoms. Uh, the bacteria exudates at the, surf leaf of the, at the surface of the leaf, and here the symptoms we can observe in the, in the field. The other pathogen is the Xanthomonas oryzae, Patova oryzae, and it's the causal agent of the bacterial leaf blight, uh, bacterial blight of rice, BAB. And this one is a systemic pathogen. Uh, it invades through wounds and the edators or waterfalls that are located at the leaf, at, uh, this bo at the border of the leaves. Uh, and it's a vascular pathogen which moves and lives in the zingum vessels. So two important pathogens and uh, really very uh, important now in, East Afri in West Africa, especially we are facing a lot of infection of uh, BLS. So there's these two bacteria of global importance and I, I wanted in this uh, slide to show the geographical repartition of these bacteria in, uh, in the world. So you can see uh, the presence of this bacterial disease in, um, in Asia. Uh, also in Africa, uh, and also it was reported in different countries, uh, BLB essentially, BLX was not reported so far in, uh, in South America. So you can see Central in, in South America, I mean it was reported in some old uh, uh, papers, but was never really uh, proved that it was a Xanthomonas or Rhizia or Rhizia strain, so I think we are facing here a problem of misidentification of the bacteria. And uh, the bacteria, the, the disease was also reported in the U.S. And you will see that we, are, we have different strains in the U.S. So the modern strains that are well studied are uh, the strains from the Philippines, Japan, and Korea. and was the first strain that was sequenced. Uh, I wanted also to uh, show you that uh, we have 
we are acquiring now a lot of data concerning the, uh, the total mass horizon uh, genomics. Uh, so a lot of different strains have been sequenced um, in the US, uh, in, the, in Asia, in the Philippines, Korea, Japan, and in China. And also we uh, started to sequence some African strains, uh, mainly from uh, uh, West Africa. So we have a lot of genome available, but also a lot are coming. Uh, currently in our lab, we are sequencing around 40 or 50 new strains of Totomonas uh, arising in uh, West Africa. So this allows us to compare the gene repertoires, also to identify some putative virulence factors. Uh, and also uh, we and others, and mainly in the genome Beach lab, uh, have developed uh, diagnostic tools, and also in our lab in Montpellier, we are developing new typing and tracing tools to be able to do some epidemiologic surveillance of this important bacteria in, uh, in, uh, around the world. So, if we focus on the, in West Africa and bacterial event in West Africa, what is the situation? We, I have highlighted here in yellow all the countries where the disease was reported. Uh, was reported, but doesn't mean that we have some uh, uh, strains available to study. So we have very few uh, actually uh, strains available. We have strains from Mali and Burkina, and from Niger and from Cameroon. Uh, so these strains are available in situ in, 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 with our collaborators in Africa, but also they are now in international collections in, uh, in Europe. And uh, as I said before, we have sequenced strains, and we have strains from Mali, Burkina, Niger, and Cameroon that have been sequenced. I represented here the, the small uh, cycle for the for the genome. And as I said before, uh, in uh, each lab, they have developed a very interesting and useful tool, which is a multiplex PCR, uh, which allows us to distinguish in a, in a one PCR. Uh, what the Xanthomonas or Rizé or Rizé from the Xanthomonas or Rizé or Rizé color. Uh, and actually, uh, I mean, presently, uh, Gillian Lang in, in the lab is developing a new um, system for detection, which is a LAMP uh, PCR. So these tools have been transferred in Africa, and they are very useful tools for detecting and characterizing the, the pathogens. So we have learned also from the genome that uh, the, we have different uh, clades among these Xanthomonas arising. You have this is based on the uh, tree we we obtained from the uh, seven nine housekeeping genes from the genomes. Oops, sorry. So here we have a clade for the Xanthomonas arising arising from Africa, arising rizicola, which are close to the African strains from XOO, and we have also the Asian strains here, and the Xanthomonas Horizon US strains here, which are quite far from the other clades. This was, was well described in different papers. Uh, what I wanted to also highlight is the, the presence of the TAL. TAL are uh, effector genes that are uh, um, injected in the host plant by the bacteria through the type 3 type 3 sequencing system, and these uh, specific genes are deregulating the transcriptome of the, of the plant. Uh, and what is interesting is we have only 8 tiles in the African strain of XO, up to 26 in the Rizicola, up to 20 in the Xanthomonas Horizon Horizon, and none in the Xanthomonas Horizon US strain. I will not go further in, in this because uh, Dr. Leach will, will speak about the this tomorrow about the importance of the tile in the virulence of, of, the, of these strains. Uh, what I wanted to stress is also that we have some different races uh, among these pathogens, among the Tomas Horizon Horizon. We have three, three races and up to 20 races in the Tomas Horizon in Asia. And uh, no race has been characterized so far in the Tomas Horizon Rizicola. Uh, so this Races are based on the reaction of the strains on a different set of lines, uh, isogenic lines that we call IRB lines, and each line contains uh, specific resistant genes, X3 or X4. So uh, by inoculation, uh, this is a different strains of XOO, you can uh, easily uh, characterize a race, uh, a 
among the, among the strengths. So we characterized it some time ago, uh, in 2003, and that was published in 2007, uh, three races in Africa that are different from the one in Asia. So this is really something important because we are using these strengths to screen for resistance among the materials. Uh, right. So what are the challenges we, 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 we are facing so far? Uh, rice genetic improvements have made really very significant contribution to the management of uh, vital disease in Asia, especially uh, a lot of genetic resources, omics approaches uh, have been available are, 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 and are available to assist breeding. We have more than 30, up to 35 rice vital blight resistant genes available so far. In Asia, we have commercially released uh, marker-assisted uh, marker assisted, uh, selected rice varieties with XA gene combination and mainly the genes that are used are XA4, XA5, XA13 and XA21 either in a single or uh, combined in the variety uh, and most of these varieties have been released in uh, India, China uh, and also the Philippines so that is for the rice uh, vector blight for the rice Vector leaf streak, we have uh, RXO1 gene, the maize gene that have been cloned uh, and uh, introduced in rice, but so far we don't have any rice resistant genes for this disease. Uh, and also, all this has been possible through the consortium that have been uh, built by collaborators at IRI and in, in Asia. In Africa, the situation is completely different. Uh, there is no breeding strategy nor any single resistant gene identified so far for PLB or the PLS uh, disease. Uh, why? Uh, I think nobody really has paid some uh, attention to this disease. Uh, they were first reported in the 80s and then, um, and then in the 2003 and, and, um, and up to now. Um, we have really very limited equipment and logistics and resources uh, in West Africa. Uh, capacity building also is uh, something which is uh, really um, important and, and still missing for this uh, uh, for management of this disease. And what the farmer says when you are working with farmer, they want their local variety with resistance to BLB or BLS because they don't want us to bring some new varieties uh, that they don't know. So it's, it's really a challenge also to, um, to be able to answer to the farmers and to give them some uh, good resistant genes because we don't have any. Uh, and we'll see why. Uh, so the sources of... We have identified, of course, some sources of resistance in, uh, in the rice and Rizak Laborima also. And this was a work by uh, Gustav Gedatin doing his PhD thesis with us. So what we have started uh, together with Gustav and also while uh, I was uh, doing my uh, work with, uh, in, uh, at Colorado State University, we have screened the uh, Oriza SNP set plus also the, the Kitaki which is not part of the Oriza SNP set. And we have screened with one of the rays from Africa, the race A3, so it's a MI1 strain which is originated from Mali. And uh, what we found is that, uh, and this is represents the lesion length in centimeters, and this is, these are the different varieties. Uh, and I put a, like a cutoff here at around four, uh, four centimeters. And above this, it's, uh, uh, below this is highly resistant, and below this is, uh, above this is highly susceptible. So what you can see is uh, globally the all the indica varieties are highly resistant to this race, except for few strains, uh, for few lines. Uh, and also, you can see that in the, the Japonica are highly susceptible, and the owls are highly resistant to uh, this particular strain. So, what we have done with our colleague, uh, oh yeah, Anne, I wanted to add that there is a really very strong reaction, like a PHR type reaction, with some of these varieties. So what we have done with our colleague at IRI, we have done a modifier marker uh, regression analysis, and we showed that there are some integration segments from Japonica and the Kana House that are associated with uh, this uh, uh, phenotype, with uh, strength, these strains. 
So what we have done then is uh, also, you can see that IR64 is highly resistant, while Azucena is highly susceptible to this strain. And uh, what we started in the lab with this time, so we started the time with, but just uh, that is PhD this year at the University of Abomey in Benin. We have used the 178 recombinant input lines from the IR64 Azucena population that was developed by uh, IRD and CIRAL. We saw, as I said, IR64 highly resistant and Azucena highly susceptible. And uh, so, uh, to go quickly, I will pass on, on this detail. Uh, we did the phenotypic evaluation using five strains that represent different races of the pathogen in West Africa. And we did some leaf clipping inoculation and we used this uh, scale to uh, screen for uh, the lesion length uh, of, the, of the bacteria. No, the lesion length on the leaves induced by the bacteria, sorry. <coughs> so this is the quantitative trait glossy analysis. So you can see the distribution of the lesion length induced by each of the strands we use, the African strand we use. So we have here the distribution uh, of the number of plants according to the, the lesion length, the number of plants according to the lesion length. So you can see that we have a continuum variation of the lesion length that is indicating of the partial resistance and the presence of quantitative tech loci. So this is a representation of the different QTLs we found on the 12 chromosome of the rice. So you can see that we have different QTLs uh, in this uh, different chromosome induced by the different strains we use. Uh, so the main uh, QTL we are interested in and because they are uh, also um, explaining a high percentage of the variation are located in the chromosome 7 and the chromosome 12. And we, uh, we have here a representation of the uh, chromosome 7 in the reference genome Nipomba, with uh, on the left uh, the, uh, uh, the, ah, okay. uh, the uh, with the different markers, the SSR markers. And here we have the physical map. Uh, so we I indicated here the, the, the QTL we found, which is coding for, uh, which is uh, explaining 37 percent of the variation. We have also here the, um, the QTL that was described by a group at IRI and with the presence of XA8. Uh, we know that it's not XA8 because our strain is not inducing any reaction with the XA8. So what is the, the next question we are addressing now is what is behind this QTL and with all the information of all the data that are available now for, the, for RISE, we hope to, have to narrow down this uh, QTL and to go quickly to the identification of some genes. So what we have done is to use the IR64 genome, the MSU7 uh, version, and uh, so we have uh, a huge number of IR64 scaffold, huge number of genes. Uh, without the transposable element, we have still uh, 417 genes in this uh, region of the QTL. We have also done in the lab some uh, gene expression uh, analysis using IR64 uh, compared to MI1 and also um, uh, a mock inoculated. And uh, we have uh, 30 genes that align to this 30 to 30 IR64 scaffold in this region. And recently also, uh, my colleague at uh, IMI, uh, Mao, Mao uh, did uh, some alignments of integration blocks from the Oriza SMP. So uh, we have also narrowed down a uh, little bit the. Uh, well, I mean, we can locate some IR64 integration in this region between 6 and the 7 megabase. So it's still a big QTL of uh, 11 megabase. So, what are the perspectives? I think it's the one slide. Uh, so one of the perspectives here is, we have different perspectives, but it's interesting where genomics can accelerate building for resistance to BLB in, uh, in Africa. Uh, we really would like to identify the candidate genes in, this, uh, in the major PTLs by integrating uh, for the comprehensive omics data for RISE. 
So as I said, the sequence uh, that are coming, especially for IS-64, the SNP information and also the expression data. We would like to validate some connected genes uh, identified in this region of the QTM, develop some functional markers, uh, but also uh, because we, we know uh, all the limitations of this big bioparental uh, mapping population. We would like now to go for the magic screen and there are some posters um, uh, explaining what are this population. Uh, and we have experts here uh, at this uh, congress who are working on, on this magic screen and to do some uh, GWAS mapping with uh, African strain. And also, uh, I will skip that because uh, Janet will talk about this uh, use of x 11 5 as a tag platform. So I would like to thank now uh, my collaborators, uh, especially at IRD and IDSCM and Matthias Storbiu, who, who did uh, most of the analysis, uh, the QT analysis, Boris Zurek and Sebastian Pinat, who are doing the transcriptomic analysis, uh, Africa Rise with uh, Gustav G. Data, who did uh, all the phenotyping and the genotyping of the population and Marino and John Job, Janice at Colorado State University, and uh, Rami Maulion, who is doing all the uh, omics analysis, I mean, uh, uh, what I, I just presented. So we've got some support from USAID and the Generation Challenge Program, and uh, I was supported by the American Fellowship while at Colorado State University. And I put here an uh, illustration of my collaborators in Africa. So, thank you very much. Are there any questions? And this race is only present in Mali. Uh, we don't know yet, but our hypothesis is that in this trend there is a specific TAL effector that is interacting with uh, the IF24. And in IF24, you have the XA18 gene, which is not working for Asian strain. So our hypothesis is that it might mean that we have one effector, TAL effector, interacting with XA18. But we, 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 so far we didn't confirm that. Yeah. But it's uh, interesting that, you know, I mean, this is a, a race which, for which we cannot reveal any exegene, so it's really a problem for us. Yeah. Is the QTL effective against Xanthomonas erysicola? Erysicola? Mm -hmm. We don't know. We never screen for erysicola. That is something we, we would like to do, yeah. Especially because uh, Xanthomonas erysicola are so close to the erysicola. And especially in the fatal um, sequence. And especially if there is no single gene resistance. Exactly. So yeah. It would be very useful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for staying through the session, and thank you, Dr. Bush. Thank you very much, Dr. Bush, and thank you for a round of applause for the as well.